Hi guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer. Now I'm in week two of not having much of a voice, so please bear with me today while I get through this. This morning I had a lovely conversation with a lady who I hope and pray is now a best friend of mine. Yeah, here goes my voice, okay? <clears throat> I'm in week two of this. Okay, this lady that I was speaking to this morning, she said that she um, didn't like the situation at her work. So I want to do a video about this today where we discuss so you can learn how to get through this thing called mental health, okay? So I'm going to call this video, Am I the One with the Issue? <laughs> Let's just say you work with somebody and they're always late and you're always on time and you find out that it, you know you, it's very aware that you have to do two people's job until that other person turns up and then they usually get all the credit for it <laughs> isn't that funny how that always works out so who's got the issue here and I'll tell you the issue is the person who is um, blaming because we do blame when we have an issue with somebody else okay so what happens is when you're in a workplace and there you know you go to your manager and you say oh this woman's always late what are we going to do about it because I'm doing two people's work until she gets there and does her share in a workplace they will always say one of three options option one is to keep going on the same wave you don't stir the pot at all <clears throat> Second option is to confront the person and say to them, are you aware that you're doing this behavior and I want it fixed? The third option is to avoid it. Totally avoid it. So instead of getting involved now in that issue, you simply don't get in that energetically attached to it. So in society, because I've been through this with past employers of myself, they say to help our mental health, we must confront the issue. They say to confront it. But I'll tell you what this creates. If we go and confront that person who we have an issue with, we're actually creating more drama. We're reflecting the issue that they are creating. We're also creating self-stress, which lowers our vibration and ultimately we need medication for. So do you think that's the right option in a spiritual sense? Because I don't think that's the way to go with all the training that I've done in both psychiatry, um, like psychology, and also spiritualism, okay? And also brain health. I don't believe that is the way, the correct way to approach things. I personally feel the best way is to avoid that confrontation. So I'm not saying to just um, go under your rock, put your head under the rock and pretend things don't happen. I'm not saying that at all. But what I'm saying is if we do not concentrate and we do not think about the other person's drama, the other person's being late in the office. Ooh, I'm so upset now. See that emotion that we now get? So if we don't put our emotional energy into these instances and we avoid it, we then create within ourselves a happier, more uplifting, more higher vibration status where that other issue no longer matters to us. I had a friend and he said to me one day, he said, do you care if I go and do this situation? And I said to him, mate, I don't care at all what you do. And he got offended by it, okay? Because he could not understand that I've just allowed him to do whatever he want, wants and I'm not going to get emotionally attached to it. Okay, because we're all free spirits. No one is connected at the hip. I've said this in other videos. Okay, so as soon as we realize that we are a walking, 
talking, breathing, independent person who does not rely on anybody else, we then can stand in our own authority, take our strength back. That's a motorbike going past my house. It's all good. And we can take our authority back. And that's how we we empower ourselves to get confidence, build our self-esteem. We don't have as as much um, mental health issues. We start to live stress-free. And most of all, we're avoiding all that stress and drama that other people create. So we then don't get emotionally or energetically attached to it. Okay? So a big question for you all today is, why do we allow other people's actions to affect us so much? Why do we get so triggered but when somebody else does something that we don't approve of? Because that's where we have to sit there and say, what is really going on here? I'll tell you a story. I've got a little intersection. It's only it's right where I leave my house. I go around a corner and it's a main road. When I'm at that main road, I can only go left. So there's a turn lane from the corner that comes into this street and they do illegal U-turns there. And as I'm coming out and I can only go left, sometimes they're doing the um, illegal U-turn and there's been a few times where I've nearly been hit by this other car doing an illegal U-turn. So whenever I see anybody there doing the illegal U-turn, I get really upset. So we go into that emotion. Why am I getting so upset when these people do things? Because I'm on the other side. Oh, perspective. I've been that person coming out of the side street and I've nearly been hit by a guy doing an illegal action. So the other day I had to go down the road and I'm going for a long time and there's nowhere to turn around and come back. And I just thought, stuff it, I'm going to turn into the side street and do a U-turn. Oh my goodness. And I thought... I wasn't supposed to do that, you know, because you know, if I go another kilometre or two up the road, there was an actual um, lane where it says U-turns are allowed. So why did I go into that side street and do a U-turn? And I thought, we're all getting it. We're all now feeling. It's, it, it, it's past now where we deserve something. It's now that we are so fed up with the government telling us what we can do and what we can't do, that we're now, and I'm sure you're seeing it every day, there's somebody doing something irrationally that they would not have done three years ago before all this stuff started, right? We're seeing it everywhere. Like, I hope you just heard that bike again. He's, he lives just around the corner from me, and he goes down the street and then he just comes back, and then he goes down the street and he comes back. So three years ago, would have he just been like hooning like that? Probably not. Because now we want something. Rents are going up, mortgages are going up, food prices are going up. My coffee used to be $13 and now I went to the shop today and it's $25. It's doubled in price. And I was sitting there thinking, you've got to be bloody joking me. And then they've got the audacity next week to say, oh, it's 10% off. (laughs) So I can understand now why people are getting the way that they are with mental health. It's so predominant now. Okay, so what can we do right now within ourselves where you're sitting, listening to me or watching me, and I'm sitting here in Brisbane, Australia. What can we do right now to stop other people's actions affecting us so much. First thing, we've got to disconnect from it all. What we have to do is say, right now, what am I doing that only matters to me? If I'm on an airplane and the air hostess comes out with the oxygen mask, who do you put the air, that mask on first? You always put it on yourself first, right? You just say, stuff you, I matter I matter to me, I'm putting it on me first. So if they do it on a plane, we've got to start doing that every time that we're in life as well. 
okay it's okay to say mine 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 if you watch the nemo movies those seagulls mine <laughs> it's okay to justify what is our rights okay so disconnect from everybody else don't get emotionally attached don't get energetically affected by other people turning that switch off is not easy but as soon as you say whatever it is that you've done whether it's your workplace your family your friends or your neighbors or whoever do you notice how i just didn't even get bothered by that guy on his bike even though he's speeding up and down my street all day he doesn't worry me because he doesn't mean anything to me i simply don't care what he does he can do whatever he likes because i now allow him to be who he is and as long as i can strive to say you know what i'd never do that i don't want to be the person who does that and thank you i say thank you thank you that you're showing me who i don't want to be i don't want to be a person wasting fuel when it's over two dollars twenty a liter here in brisbane right now i don't want to be a guy disrupting and causing noise noise complaints here he goes again and it doesn't bug me so how funny is that that he's doing this right now when i'm talking about this disconnect from people and don't worry about them and that's the big thing don't worry because worry causes stress worry causes drama where you ring your friend oh my god you won't believe this guy on his bike's racing past my street today so now you're inflicting that friend with all that drama bringing down their vibration as well as lowering our own vibration and then before we know it we're getting physically sick we go on to the doctor and the first thing the doctor's going to say is here's some pills chill we don't need pills this is my opinion anyway we don't need pills to make us feel good all we've got to do is look at everything in our life and say does that make me feel good and if not flick it now when we're in a work situation it's hard to say you sit next to me all day in your cubicle and i'm in mine how do i flick you off and don't concentrate on you you coming in 10 hours late so i'm doing all your work then your phone's busy and your mobile phone's ringing so you're answering that and you're giggling all day talking to your friends how do i disconnect from that i've mentally avoid it you don't have to confront them they're happy doing what they're doing And if the boss allows it, then that's their fault for allowing it, right? You're not the boss, so don't confront them, okay? So, signs of strength is when we simply walk away. It is a huge sign of strength when you've got a relative that's causing you grief don't reply to their texts you don't have to ring other other people in your family and say oh you won't believe what johnny did today because now you're inflicting them with all your drama causing stress more lowering all the vibration and they're probably in a low vibration anyway so why would you want to add to it and become that you walk away from it you disconnect from it and you don't get involved we avoid it okay so number one is disconnect from it number two is you ground yourself now the best way to do grounding now you can go and do a course and it's going to cost you about 150 to 300 bucks to learn how to do grounding and i'm going to teach it to you right now because i love doing this stuff because it's number two on my list grounding you take off your shoes and socks you go and stand on the grass and as you breathe in you breathe in all the things that you want 
And as you breathe out, you get rid of all the stuff and stuff in your life you, you don't want anymore. And you imagine you've got roots going down into the grass through your feet. So now that you're connected to the ground, because that's why it's called grounding, your energy is into the ground. And you, as you breathe in, you say, I want happiness, I want love, I want affection, I want generosity, I want kindness, I want to be forgiving, I want to be um, compassionate, understanding. And as you breathe out, you think, oh, get off me. You've got no right to be on me. All those nasty comments. When I'm accusing that guy who's speeding up and down my street on his bike. I don't need you in my life, Nick off. Do this for about five minutes a day and you're going to notice it. Okay? All right, because I'll go there. I should have said it earlier, but I'm going to say it now. There's three things in life that causes us emotional pain. The first one is our job, because we're in it usually most of our week in hours. Number two is our family. And number three on our list is society. It's our neighbours, friends, and other people that we associate, like church groups, etc. Okay? So number one is our co-workers and our boss, people we work with. So if you disconnect from them and you say, I don't want to be attached to little Susie's issues anymore. Whenever she starts gossiping, I'm going to say, uh, sorry, got no time. I need my coffee and you walk away. Now, why do I have a Mickey Mouse mug? Think about it. Because this is me saying, I don't care a nick about what you're thinking. I've got my own issues in my life I'm worrying about. I don't need to worry about yours as well, so I'm disconnecting from it. I'm going to ground myself so your stuff doesn't worry to me anymore. Number three, find routines to make a new future. So I hope you're writing these down because we've done number one, number two, and number three. So number one is disconnect. Number two is do your grounding. Number three, start routines for towards your future. Stop gossiping would be the best one I can think of to start here. Stop talking about other people. If your sister rings you and you say, oh my God, you wouldn't believe what our brother's just done tonight. Stop being involved. Stop being that meat in the sandwich with the family. If your boss rings you up at home and says, oh, can you come in early tomorrow, three hours earlier because Susie's off sick. Sure, you're going to go in, but make sure you look after you first. If you can't go in, don't just do an obligation to your boss. Just say, oh, sorry, my kids have been screaming all night. I'm tired. I need the extra three hours sleep. And you're virtually saying, stuff you. I'm coming in when I'm ready, right? Because number one is always us. Point to the most important person in the room. Point to the most important person in the room. Me. M-E is always number one and I hope you're pointing to yourself. Okay? So when we start new routines for the future, we start saying to ourselves, what am I going to do today as a little baby step so I can do it again tomorrow and I can do it again the next day and I can do it again the next day and if I take three steps backwards, it's okay. Because at least my brain is registering through the neuroplasticity of our brain, creating a new synaptic network of routines and hobby of habits. Okay, so we sit here and we start to say to ourselves, okay, today I'm not going to worry about that guy speeding down the street on his bike. Tomorrow you might say the same thing. And then the next day you think, oh, he's driving down the street the wrong way. Who cares about it? Start again. As long as you're creating that synaptic network where you don't care about what he does. Okay? So we start these route. Here he comes again. I can hear him. I hope you're hearing him through the microphone. So that's four times he's been up and down the street now. I don't care what he does. Okay? Because that's the next number four. We allow people to do what they want don't worry about it unless it really does affect you obviously 
you know every situation's different of course but it's when we just allow this guy to speed up and down the street and you don't get affected then your mental health increases and it goes good we raise in our vibration so we allow other people to do whatever they want okay and allow the past to exist as a reminder of who you want to be in your future we all make mistakes we all have done the doozies <laughs> i've done plenty of them but if you just say to yourself you know as long as i'm striving to be a better person and i accept myself now and i accept that in the future i'm going to try to be a better person that's all we have to strive for guys because ultimately mental health right now all over the globe is down the toilet how do we get out of mental health my suggestion personally would be to try hard to find the answers within yourself first get yourself a cup of tea right now i'm drinking hot water and it's got honey ginger and turmeric in it it's a beautiful concoction that i make and i drink it it's really good for my throat <laughs> it stops and an, it's an anti-inflammatory um and hopefully it'll cure my throat but i had to get on today and do this video because at the end of the day guys why do other people's e emotions because that's actions why do other people's actions affect us so much is because we allow it to we allow them to i have simple phrases that i live by every day in my life and one of those phrases is don't allow others to diminish your personal worth when we look at our own self-value how important are we are we so cheap that we're going to allow some random guy on a bike to affect us or is my personal value so high that i simply allow him to be who he is and i don't care what happens because as long as i'm doing right by me and my daughter and we're here happy in a loving kind environment that noise of the bike doesn't even affect me so to the lovely lady i said spoke to this morning let's just quickly rehash there's three ways to deal with the situation keep the, keep the normal going stay on the same path number two is to confront the person that's causing it and why then are we saying confront them because if i'm saying to let's just say that lady that comes into work late if i go and say to her hey are you aware that you come in 10 minutes late every day you're making me feel bad what we're actually trying to do is change that person do i have any right to change that person do i have any control over what she does ultimately i don't so how can i then say change who you are because i don't like it see why it's so bad so we avoid and it's a huge sign of strength to simply walk away we don't have to get involved we can simply say at the end of the day you are not important to me and that's fine because if that if we say that to somebody and they have an issue that issue is their issue not ours so that's the three keep the same keep the same path going confront them or avoid them and my suggestion is avoid them okay how do we what happens if we confront people it causes stress it brings on drama lowers our vibrations and then usually we end up on medications for it 
okay so how do we have a sign of strength when we walk away okay disconnect from it number two is ground yourself learn how to do grounding where we breathe in and breathe out all the stuff we want to come in and all the stuff that we don't want on us anymore get rid of all that Number three is to create new routines. Our synaptic network in our brain says it takes 28 days. That's what psychology says, 28 days to create a new habit. So do it in little baby steps every day for 28 days and it's so much easier than to do it. Don't just say, okay, after a week I've got to do it. Okay, don't don't force yourself because habits take little time through our synaptic network of the neuroplasticity of our brain. Number four, allow the past. Accept the future. Don't stress on what is going to happen or what has been in the past. Concentrate on being aware now in the present. And as long as we're accepting that we're going to be the best person possible, damn, with this advice today, because it's all free advice, right? This is where we start making those steps forward. So guys, if you have liked this video today, I've got a gift jar below if you do want to throw me a couple of dollars. Um, you know, I won't say no to it. Hello, it's all free advice, right? Um, I hope that this has helped you. I'm going to try to do another video tomorrow, pending my voice, because I've got to obviously save it. But just know I love you all, and I hope that this has helped. Talk to you all soon. Bye.